Well, greetings, my friends. It's been a minute since I've done a table topic, but today I wanted to take a look at Xanathar's Guide to Everything because one of the players in one of my patron games needs some help choosing the right druid circle. So we're going to explore a couple of the druid circles available in this book. I know more than you. Okay guys, so a lot of the content that I've talked about is straight out of the basic books, the core, um, your player's handbook, DM's guide, monster manual. But um, fifth edition has a fair amount of good expansions. Now, some of them I'm not really into, to be honest with you. Um, I, I haven't bought like Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide or um, the Curse of Strahd books, or the, the Tomb of Annihilation, Jungles of Chult books. So I don't know what's in there. But this is, to me, a really valuable, if not important, book to have. Um, because there's a lot of useful information about expanding your, your race and class options in here. So today's topic comes from uh, one of my patrons, uh, Nathan. He's one of the executive producers uh, for the content on the channel. And um, he's leveling up his druid. Now, Nathan has a Tabahi druid. And, um, you know, there are some, some basic options. Circle of the land, uh, circle of the moon in the player's handbook. But before jumping into that, I wanted to check out the druid circles available in Xanathar's Guide. So. Let's look at the first one, which is called Circle of Dreams. Druids who are members of the Circle of Dreams hail from regions that have strong ties to the Feywild and its dreamlike realms. The Druids' guardianship of the natural world makes for a natural alliance between them and good-aligned Fey. These Druids seek to fill the world with dreamy wonder. Their magic mends wounds and brings joy to downcast hearts and the realms they protect are gleaming, fruitful places where dream and reality blur together and where the weary can find rest. As a player and a DM, you have to ask yourself, does this circle, whichever circle I choose, does it fit? Is it going to fit with the character concept? Some people, when they're building characters, they just make a character and they don't really think about the future of their character, right? And that's, that's a fair assessment because for starters, in any role-playing game, your character might not have a future. You might just die on an adventure. But then there are more strategic approaches to character creation. Some people will even like research and maximize and optimize their character build, planning it out from level one to level 20. And, and I'm not advocating for either one of these two paths. I'm kind of advocating for a third path, which is think about the essence of your character. So in this case, Nathan made um, a, a Tabahi druid, so a cat person. Um, and I think he has the Outlander background. So would a circle of dreams fit with this character concept? Now, when I think about Tabahi, I think about their feline nature, right? Yes, they're humanoids, but there's cat in them. And anybody who's owned cats know that cats can be kind of curious creatures. They can kind of stare off into dreamy wonderlands and then just spontaneously jump up and freak out for no reason that we know of because they're cats. Sometimes a cat can come up and snuggle with you and then just for no reason like claw at you or bite you. Maybe it's being playful. But I think that the idea of a Tabahi druid circle of dreams could work. I could see that a cat being entranced with like dreamy, fey like things and being curious about things. You know, cats are kind of curious about things. So I think that could really fit. So the reason why I wanted to kind of segue into that discussion about thinking about your character is before you even look at the mechanical benefits, in other words, like what you get out of this choice, think about if it's gonna fit your character. So now that we've elaborated and we, we think that Nathan's cat folk druid could be one of these, let's look at what they get. 
Circle of Dreams features. At second level, they get Balm of the Summer Court. At sixth level, they get Hearth of Moonlight and Shadow. At tenth level, they get Hidden Paths. And at fourteenth level, they get Walker in Dreams. Let's learn about what these mean. At second level, you become imbued with the blessings of the Summer Court. You are a font of energy that offer, offers respite from injuries. You have a pool of fey energy represented by a number of d6s equal to your druid level. As a bonus action, you can choose one creature you can see within 120 feet of you and spend a number of those dice equal to half your druid level or less. Roll the spent dice and add them together. The target retains a number of hit points equal to the total. The target also gains one temporary hit point per die spent. You regain all expended dice when you finish a long rest. That is pretty amazing healing powers. It, um, in a sense, it reminds me of um, like Paladin's ability to lay on hands, but it's not just a pool of points, it's a pool of dice, which has, you know, when you're rolling dice, there's obviously roll, like rolls that are low and then there are rolls that are higher. Let's, let's think through this for a second. So if he's a second level druid, that means he can go up to one of his friends and give them 2d6 worth of healing. Now, how does that operate mechanically? As a bonus action, you can choose one creature you can see within 120 feet of you and spend a number of those dice equal to half your druid level or less. So if he's second level, that means he can do 1d6 healing to one of his friends within 120 feet. So that, in a way, is actually better than the spell healing word, or word of healing, healing word. Um, because I think with that spell, you have a 60-foot range, and you could heal a friend, but it's only like a d4 worth of healing. This is a d6 worth of healing, and it's got a 120-foot range. So ranged healing is kind of cool to help out your friends. Roll the spent dice and add them together. All right, so let's say he's got 1d6, he rolls a 3. The target regains a number of hit points equal to the total. The target also gains one temporary hit point per die spent. So a temporary hit point means it wears off after the encounter, I'm assuming. Um, so, but that's still pretty cool. And at higher levels, imagine like if you get to 10th level, you've got 10 D6s worth of just additional healing. And this doesn't use up a spell slot. Um, so that's kind of awesome, you guys. That's kind of awesome. Let's look at Hearth of Moonlight and Shadow. This one comes in at 6th level. At 6th level, home can be wherever you are. During a short or long rest, you can invoke the shadowy power of the gloaming court to help guard your respite. At the start of the rest, you touch a point in space and an invisible 30-foot radius sphere of magic appears centered on that point. Total cover blocks the sphere. While within the sphere, you and your allies gain a plus five bonus to dexterity or stealth and wisdom perception checks. And any light from open flames in the sphere, a campfire, torches, or the like, isn't visible outside it. The sphere vanishes at the end of the rest or when you leave the sphere. Wow, that is also supremely cool. Um, and when I think of that, I think of the spell Leoman's Tiny Hut. But Leoman's Tiny Hut is not a 30-foot radius. Like Leoman's Tiny Hut is a, I think it's like a 10 by 10 maybe. But um, it's a higher level spell, and it's also very cool because it basically gives you like a protected area. Um, this is not perfectly invulnerable per se, but the fact is, is that if you were looking, if you were out in the middle of nowhere and you use this ability, you and your party and a bunch of other people, because 30 foot radius is a massive area, um, a bunch of other people would be safe in this area as well. 30 foot radius, that's like an entire house. I mean, think about that for a second. That's like a small house. like or a, a barn, you know, your party makes it to this place 
And maybe, maybe you even have additional people. Maybe there's refugees or like peasants or commoners who need your help. And you gather everybody inside of this tight space and you, you use your hearth of moonlight and shadow. And now basically you've concealed everybody from the bad guys. That is uh, incredibly powerful. If for nothing else, even if it was just you and your party, the fact that you can cast this and everybody can gain a long rest while you're in this safe place is amazing. Um, that is super cool. All right, let's look at hidden paths. This, is, um, this kicks in at 10th level for Circle of Dreams. Starting at 10th level, you can use the hidden magical pathways that some fey use to traverse space in the blink of an eye. As a bonus action on your turn, you can teleport up to 60 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. Alternatively, you can use your action to teleport one willing creature you touch up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier and you regain all expended uses of it when you finish a long rest. That is supremely cool. That's like um, super powered Misty Step where you could do it on yourself, but you could also Misty Step some other people. I mean, I know it's not exactly Misty Step, but kind of the same thing. And like if you had a, a 16 or 18, you know, 16 would give you three uses and 18 would give you four uses. So uh, if you had a fat wisdom modifier, that's a bunch of times where you can use that power, which is pretty cool. Now, I mean, granted, that's at 10th level, but that's still pretty cool. All right, the last um, level of circle powers is Walker in Dreams. At 14th level, the magic of the Feywild grants you the ability to travel mentally or physically through dreamlands. When you finish a short rest, you can cast one of the following spells without expending a spell slot or requiring material components. Pause. This is cool. No matter what spell it's going to be, this is about to be cool. Now let's look. Dream. So the spell dream with you as the messenger. Scrying or teleportation circle. Whoa. This use of teleportation circle is special. Rather than opening a portal to a permanent teleportation circle, it opens a portal to the last location where you finished a long rest on your current plane of existence. If you haven't taken a long rest on your current plane, the spell fails but isn't wasted. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Yeah, I mean, that's 14th level. That's a long way off. But that is pretty damn cool, man. As somebody who has played uh, a divination person, scrying is an amazing power, especially in an ongoing campaign at higher level where you're dealing with very powerful creatures and NPCs. Um, teleportation circle is amazing. Dream is amazing. Um, so I'm going to say circle of dreams is pretty damn cool and, and worth your time to check out. Okay, the other option... Uh, in Xanathar's Guide to Everything is called Circle of the Shepherd. I'm going to be honest, when I first kind of skimmed this, I was like, meh. But then I reread it and I thought about how you can use it. And it's, it's actually sort of cool as well. Druids of the Circle of the Shepherd commune with spirits of nature, especially the spirits of beasts and the fae, and can call to those spirits for aid. These druids recognize that all living things play a role in the natural world, Yet they focus on protecting animals and fey creatures that have difficulty defending themselves. Shepherds, as they are known, see such creatures as their charges. They ward off monsters that threaten them, rebuke hunters who kill more prey than necessary, and prevent civilization from encroaching on rare animal habitats and on sites sacred to the fey. Many of these druids are happiest far from cities and towns, content to spend their days in the company of animals and the fey creatures of the wilds. Members of this circle become adventurers to oppose forces that threaten their charges or to seek knowledge and power that will help them safeguard their charges better. Wherever these druids go, the spirits of the wilderness are with them. So before we get into the nitty gritty of what they get, let's think about this. Would a circle of the shepherd work with Nathan's Tabahi druid? who is an outlander. 
I think based on what we've just read, I think it would work. Concept-wise, I think a circle of the, of the shepherd would fit in with Nathan's character concept. Um, let's take a look at their features. So at second level, they get speech of the woods and spirit totem. At sixth level, they get mighty summoner. At 10th level, guardian spirit. And 14th level, they get faithful summons. So let's take a look and see what this means. Speech of the woods. At second level, you gain the ability to converse with beasts and many fae. You learn to speak, read, and write sylvan. In addition, beasts can understand your speech and you gain the ability to decipher their noises and motions. Most beasts lack the intelligence to convey or understand sophisticated concepts, but a friendly beast could relay what it has seen or heard in the, in the recent past. This ability doesn't grant you friendship with beasts, though you can combine this ability with gifts to curry favor with them as you would with any non-player character. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Right off the bat, you pick up another language and the ability to speak and communicate and understand beasts. There's the forest gnome uh, racial ability to, to be able to speak with small beasts, but this doesn't specify small beasts. This is like all beasts, which is kind of more powerful. Also at spec second level is spirit totem. So this is where, after I reread it, I was like, hmm, this is kind of dope. Spirit totem. Starting at second level, you can call forth nature spirits to influence the world around you. As a bonus action, you can magically summon an incorporeal spirit to a point you can see within 60 feet of you. The spirit creates an aura in a 30-foot radius around that point. It counts as neither a creature nor an object, though it has the spectral appearance of the creature it represents. As a bonus action, you can move the spirit up to 60 feet to a point you can see. The spirit persists for one minute or until you're incapacitated. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. The effect of the spirit's aura depends on the type of spirit you summon from the objects options below. Just activating it is the bonus action. Moving it around is a bonus action. So you're not burning spell slots to do this and you're not burning standard actions which is pretty cool. Now, let's look at what these spirits are because this is where we get into the nitty gritty and find out what the benefits are. Bear Spirit. The Bear Spirit grants you and your allies its might and endurance. Each creature of your choice in the air aura when the spirit appears gains temporary hit points equal to five plus your druid level. In addition, you and your allies gain advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws while in the aura. Dope. So a minute is 10 rounds. That's a long time. That grants a lot of benefit. Advantage on all strength checks and strength saving throws. So remember that strength checks also include anything related to like athletics, which is a skill that's modified by strength. All right, Hawk Spirit. The Hawk Spirit is a consummate hunter, aiding you and your allies with its keen sight. When a creature makes an attack roll against a target in the spirit's aura, you can use your reaction to grant advantage to that attack roll. In addition, you and your allies have advantage on wisdom perception checks while in the aura. Oh, snap. That's pretty cool. Now you only get, you as a character, only get one reaction every round. But let's say that one of your friends is doing a, a longbow attack you can use your reaction every round as long as they're in your aura or in the spirit's aura to give them advantage on their attack. That's huge. That's very, very cool. I mean, imagine that, like 10 rounds of somebody attacking with advantage with their longbow. Oh, wait, it's any attack roll? Oh, I was thinking, I was reading that as ranged. No, it just says when a creature makes an attack roll. Oh. So any's at anyone's attack roll, dex-based or strength-based, doesn't matter. You're basically giving them like extra precision. Oh, that's dope. Wow. Okay, the last one is Unicorn Spirit. The Unicorn Spirit lends its protection to those nearby. You and your allies gain advantage on all ability checks made to detect creatures in the spirit's aura. In addition, if you cast a spell using a spell slot that restores hit points to any creature inside or outside the aura, 
Each creature of your choice in the aura also regains hit points equal to your druid level. Oh, I see. Okay, so if you cast Cure Wounds on one of your friends, all of your other friends in the aura also gain a couple extra hit points based on your druid level. So that's cool. That's, that's a lot cooler than when I originally read that, that Spirit Totem ability. And that's right at second level. All right, at sixth level, they get Mighty Summoner. Starting at 6th level, beasts and fey that you conjure are more resilient than normal. Any beast or fey summoned or created by a spell that you cast gains the following benefits. The creature appears with more hit points than normal, two extra hit points per hit die it has. The damage from its natural weapons is considered magical for the purpose of overcoming immunity and resistance to non-magical attacks and damage. I guess that would be really cool if you conjured beasts or fey. I guess if you were using spells that involved conjuring or summoning beasts or fey, that would be cool. I'll have to think on that. And maybe those of you watching this video, if you have some good ideas about how to use that, share them in the comments below. All right, at 10th level, Circle of the Shepherd gets Guardian Spirit. Beginning at 10th level, your spirit totem safeguards the beasts and fey that you call forth with your magic. When a beast or fey that you summoned or created with a spell ends its turn in your spirit totem aura, that creature regains a number of hit points equal to half your druid level. Okay, so again, that being cool relies on you thinking about and summoning um, really cool creatures or fey to be your assistants, which as a druid you should probably do. Um, starting at 14th level, the nature, sorry, this is Faithful Summons. This is the last of the um, features of the Circle of the Shepherd. Starting at 14th level, the nature spirits you commune with protect you when you are the most defenseless. If you are reduced to zero hit points or are incapacitated against your will, you can immediately gain the benefits of Conjure Animals as if it were cast using a ninth level spell slot. It summons four beasts of your choice that are challenge rating two or lower. The conjured beasts appear within 20 feet of you. If they receive no commands from you, they protect you from harm and attack your foes. The spell lasts for one hour, requiring no concentration or until you dismiss it. No action required. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Okay, that's, that's really cool. So I guess when we're thinking about like conjure fey and conjure animals, we need to kind of do a deeper dig into those spells and how they work because a few of these powers, the Mighty Summoner, the Guardian Spirit, that kind of stuff, has an impact. Um, they have an impact. Having looked over this, I think Circle of the Dreams and Circle of the Shepherd both have really cool things. Both of them could fit for Nathan's Tabahi Druid. Going back to the Player's Handbook, I'm always a big fan of Circle of the Moon because it gives you combat wild shape and wild shape, like, supercharging, basically allows you to, to be more of the, the beast master. Those are just some interesting little insights. Hopefully this has been informative uh, for Nathan, but also for all of you guys. And like I said before, if you have experience making a druid who has been in either Circle of the Dreams or Circle of the Shepherd, um, please share in the comments below and tell us what you thought of your experience, if you liked it, and any other tips or tricks that you might have for making a druid with one of these circles. Until next time, uh, we'll see you and have a good game.